guys, it's Mo. I'm so excited to finally have the time to sit down and record my wrap up for the month of August for you guys. I have been putting this off for so long, but between um, getting my laser eye surgery, which I'll talk a little bit more about in my next Friday Reads video, I think, and going back to work full time, I just have not had the time to sit down and talk about everything that I read for that month and I read a lot of stuff so I've just been anxiously waiting and I haven't posted anything for so long and so I'm glad to be able to make this video for you guys today. I think my last video was my favorites which reminds me one of the favorites I had talked about, I don't know if you guys remember, is Anna Luisa, the jewelry brand in my last video and the discount code is still good for a short time so go ahead and check them out. I actually have um, the earrings on today. I've literally been wearing these earrings like every day. I love them so much so that discount code is still available for anyone who is interested for that. But on to the books. I have I think 19 books altogether that I read for the month of August. Yes I double counted and it was 19 books so that is a lot and I won't be able to talk about all of them in depth right now. I am trying to record this video really quickly before I actually go into work in about 30 minutes so um forgive me if some of these reviews aren't the best also I have it like it's right now of me recording this it's September 14th so some of these books I've read now about six weeks ago so my memory on them might be a little bit foggy but I'll be using my Goodreads to hopefully like kickstart my memory and remember um, my ratings and the main things about each of these books in case there's any that I forgot about. Also I can't remember if I mentioned or not a lot of these books um, some of well some of them I've mentioned during my Friday Reads videos so go back and watch those if you want to get a little bit more in depth uh, talking about those books. Also I have um, my reading wrap up for the first week of August was the Read Athon, which right now just seems so far away ago. <laughs> but um, the books I read for that I'll show you guys them and give you my review but I'm not going to go too in depth with those because I already did a wrap up specifically for those books but in case you missed that video and were curious on my ratings for those books I will include that in this video. So the first book I read, finished this month was Zone 1 by Colson Whitehead. I had really enjoyed his books um, The Nickel Boys and The Underground Railroad. This one was a very different type of book. Um, I gave this one two stars. I think I went into this more in depth than my first Friday Reads video so I don't really want to talk about this one too much. This one is in the like post-apocalyptic horror genre and I just gave it two stars because it was a short book but I feel like it took me so long to get through. It was just really boring. We're kind of following the main character through just the mundane things even though it's like post-apocalypse you would think it would be a little bit more interesting but for this one it just really didn't live up to my expectations but I still am a, I still will keep reading Colson Whitehead's books, just this one didn't really do anything for me. Okay, so next I'll go through the books that I read for the Readathon. I actually ended up DNFing a couple of books during that week that I just wasn't getting on with too well. So the ones that I did not finish were Brown Girl on the Ring by Nalo Hopkinson and Oryx and Craig by Margaret Atwood. Neither of these were just really doing anything for me and I didn't want to force myself to continue on with them, especially um, this one by Margaret Atwood because I already didn't finish the last one of hers I read, The Blind Assassin. So I'm just not sure if she's just really an author for me. I will maybe in a year or two give her another chance with another book, but for now um, I don't think I even own any other books by her that I haven't read. And this one was part of a series so I didn't want to force myself through this. I think there's a tri this is the Matt Adam trilogy and um, I just was confused and didn't really care for the writing or what was going on. So. I decided to give up on this one. And this one, it wasn't a bad book at all. I feel like some people would like it. There was just certain things in here that I didn't like reading about, so I just decided to not finish this one. Next we have a short story collection, and that is Shut Up Your Pretty by Taya Mutonji. They actually... It actually isn't really so much of a short story collection because all of the stories revolve around the same main character so it kind of just reads like different chapters so I didn't really completely understand the whole short story collection when they all were following the same person but it was interesting. Um, it wasn't bad. I just wasn't like crazy about it. It wasn't super memorable. We're following a young girl um, from I forget maybe from around like age 12 to like late teens I believe. She is Congolese and she lives in a pretty like low income area and we're following her and her relationships with a couple of different people around her. Um, but yeah, I just wasn't like overall like wildly impressed with this one. Um, this, which kind of goes for my whole week, honestly, um, with the books that I chose for this readathon. And I read Room by Emma Donahue. I believe this was for the prompt to 
read a book where you had already watched the adaptation for. And I gave this one three stars. I feel like the adaptation, I like the movie kind of better, in, which is a rare case in this case. But we're following a young boy from his perspective, and he's about four or five, I can't remember now, in the book. And him and his mom live in this room, and that's the only life that he's known. I don't really want to give away any spoilers to it, but um, yeah, it was just okay. I think because maybe I probably would have enjoyed it more if I had read the book first, but it's pretty faithful in the adaptation, so it kind of just felt like I was reading the exact movie again. <laughs> then we have Clara Callan by Richard B. Wright, which I think I also gave this one two, three stars. Yeah, I gave this one three stars, and we are following um, two sisters in the late 1930s and their letters back and forth to each other as well as some journal entries and stuff. Um, I thought this one was okay, the writing was okay. Um, I just, once again, wasn't superly impressed by this. Um, it was interesting enough to keep my attention for the whole book, just wasn't my favorite. And then the last one was another short story collection, Skin Folk by Neil Hopkinson. This was probably the book that I enjoyed most during that week, but I still, um, I still only gave this one about three, three and a half stars just because some stories I was really into and some I wasn't. I definitely would be open though to reading more books by Nayla Hopkinson because I do believe that she is a good writer. Um, I don't know if I actually finished this one during the week or after the fact of it. Of the, um, I think I, finished, I think technically I finished this one like after the readathon ended and that is A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Ozeki and I gave this one three stars as well. Maybe like three and a half so um, in this book we're following two different timelines. One of them takes place in British Columbia. We're following Ruth who finds this Hello Kitty lunchbox washed up um, that she believes is from the 2011 tsunami and in it is a young Japanese girl's diary and so we're going back and forth between Ruth's life and reading the journal entries from the young Japanese girl who her name was now and this story suffered from the fact where one storyline is just more interesting than the other. I found Ruth's storyline to be a little bit boring, um, not much going on. I feel like it just had to be there. So to have a frame for Now's journal entries, which I found a lot more interesting and her storyline more interesting, but still at times I was finding myself a little bit um, bored, I guess, in both of those storylines. Some parts were really interesting, some parts were not. So I gave this like three stars and um, it was a good book one that I would recommend, but I just didn't love it. Then I picked up a new release. I was able to check this one out from the library, and that's The Banishing Half by Britt Bennett. And this one I gave four stars, like four and a half. It was so close to five, but it just wasn't fully there for me. But I would definitely recommend if this is a book that you're interested in. I've seen it everywhere recently, and I have heard really nothing but good things about this book. So we're following two sisters who are twins and they grew up in this small town where everyone's kind of like light-skinned mixed race and they're different paths when they both leave, I believe when they're like 16, and one of them decides to um, pass for white where she lives at and the other one ends up marrying a very dark-skinned man and having kids with him and returning back to the town. And we're going back and forth and we're not following just them but some other characters along the way. And I really enjoyed this book. I liked Britt Bennett's book, The Mothers, and I feel like this as a follow-up to that was really good, and I just can't wait to read more books by this author as well. Next, I'll talk about the series that I completed for the last month, and that was the Broken Earth trilogy. I got to the second and third books, The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky, and I really, really enjoyed these books. Um, I gave the first book, uh, the fifth season, I believe five stars, and I was just super excited to continue on. I was trying to make myself wait a little bit, but I'm glad I didn't wait too long because I feel like I would have started to forget some of the um, specific like characters, storylines, and stuff going on in the world, so I feel like I read it at the perfect time. And I continued with the third one just immediately after because I wanted to complete the whole series. So I gave The Obelisk Gate five stars. I want to say it was like 4.75 or something, but I ran it to 5 because I just thought it was really good. And then with The Stone Sky, I enjoyed it as well, but um, I think I gave this one like 4 stars. So um, I, my favorite one is the first book in the series, the fifth season, but the other two books were good as well. Just I really love the first one. I feel like the first one will always be my favorite of the series. I can't really say too much about these because they will give a lot of spoilers for the from the first one, but we're basically just broadly, it's like a science fiction fantasy series. We are following um, this earth where every, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of years there's this fifth season where 
just crazy bad things happen on the earth with the um with the weather and with like uh, climate stuff and there's these people who have certain powers to be able to control earth almost like earthbending kind of I don't know it's very similar to that I don't watch Avatar but I imagine it's kind of a little bit similar I could be completely off base with that but yeah I went into the series not really knowing too much just knowing that it's one um, I think every one of these books won the Hugo Awards and I know that a lot of people on booktube recently have been reading it and then loving them and I'm glad that they definitely lived up to the hype for me and I want to read other books by N.K. Jemisin soon. Then I started another series since I finished that one um, and that is Knots and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. This is a young adult kind of like alternate reality or alternate history book. Uh, I gave it four stars. Um, I liked it but I didn't like it as much as I had wanted to. Like I wanted this to be five star series but um, I just feel like I'm not in the uh, age that this book series is marketed towards because it's definitely for like kids who are like in high school or something and I feel like if I had read this when I was a teenager I would have loved this series so much and we're following it's where instead of how it is modern day where black people were slaves and white people were the oppressors in this it's like an alternate history where white people were the slaves and black people are the elite class in the society and it's still very much um racially divided and they're trying to um kind of work towards uh, uh what's it called desegregating everybody so we're following two specifically two um characters who are from opposite sides of society and they have a friendship but their school is being like desegregated so they're um, going to be going to school together and all the issues that come with that. Uh, so this is the first, I think there's like five or six books in the series and I don't own the rest of them yet but I do plan on continuing on with the series. While I liked it, it's not like I feel like I urgently need to continue on but I do have plans to eventually continue on because I want to watch the um, TV show series adaptation that has been made of this book and I feel like I would really like that. I feel like there's the potential for me to like the show better than I like the book because I heard in the show they've aged up the characters and I feel like that fits the storyline better with them being older. Then I read another new release. This one I had the e-arc of or the advanced reader copy from NetGalley and that is The Black Kids by Christina Hammonds Reed and I gave this one four stars. I think I actually ended up listening to most of it on the audiobook. This is this author's debut novel and it was really good. I would definitely recommend it. It's like young adult contemporary-ish type of novel because it takes place in the 90s kind of around the race riots that were going on in Los Angeles we're following our main character her name is our main character her name is Ashley Bennett and it's the end of her senior year she is a black student but she goes to a mostly all-white school um very upper class uh type of school we're following um Ashley and her friend group um one thing I will say that kind of like kept it from being five stars for me was um, I this might have just been an issue of my own self not paying enough attention but I've kind of got all of her friends confused for each other like I didn't feel like they were very distinct and maybe I think that's just partially because I was listening to it on audiobook not, and um, I, yeah I just didn't really get much out of the friends because I would get them confused and I would get the story who was who mixed up a little bit but I would definitely recommend this book I think it was really good we're following Ashley I have to decide I don't know we're following Ashley is basically her coming of age story she's definitely a very imperfect character but she does have a good story arc and growth and everything in the book and I, everything that you would want your character to do even though they are a flawed character um I feel like it was a pretty realistic tell telling of this character's story the next book I got to I also checked out from my library it was the ebook and that is My Banishing Country by Bakari Sellers and I gave this one four stars it's a non-fiction book and it was really good. Like, I, there was parts where I highlighted and now because I checked out from my library I don't think I can still see my highlights on there anymore. We're following Bakari's story but it's not just a memoir. We're really just looking at the history of the South and um, looking at historical things and cultural things. It, it's not just focused on him alone. His hometown is uh, Denmark, South Carolina and it's one of the poorest country um, countries it's one of the poorest states in the country we are looking at him growing up and like his father was involved in a lot of like civil rights things with like Martin Luther King and um, him himself he went into going into politics and where we see his journey through that whole like 
field that's just something I don't really know too much about but I feel like I learned a lot through um, his journey even though I really just loved his resiliency and that he always kept trying um, even when things seemed like really impossible and just his attitude towards everything was just really refreshing to read about to read from. I didn't really know too much about him. I, actually, I didn't know anything about him before I read this book, but he's definitely like a politician and we learn a lot about his political career. And I never thought that that would be a book that I would be interested in reading, but I really did enjoy this one. And so um, I would definitely recommend it. I don't really like to read a lot of political books to begin with and I didn't realize that this one had like so much politics in it going in, but I did find myself enjoying it. So that was just definitely a good um, surprise for me. Next I randomly picked up on a whim um, A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. It's the first book in the series of the memoirs of Ali Trent and I really enjoyed this book. I gave it four stars. I completely listened to this one on the audiobook but since then I have bought in the complete series in physical books and so um, I believe I just finished the second one but that'll be part of my September wrap up. And we're following Lady Trent. She is really, I don't know, it reads like a Victorian novel, um, but with the added element of it's kind of, it has the fantasy fantasy stuff in it. it. It doesn't take place on Earth. It's like a completely other made up world as well, with a lot of similar things society wise as like Victorian England kind of. And she really wants to live like a scholarly life, but that's just definitely not the way things are done. Women are just made to find a husband and have kids and so she is very interested in science and specifically in the study of dragons and I don't want to go too much into it because I don't want to give away like half the book or anything but obviously there's a whole bunch of books in the series and it has to do with her and dragons but uh, she does definitely have a lot of like adventures and stuff but I wouldn't say the even though the book is called The Natural History of Dragons it's mm, also it, it's more like 50-50 on dragons and half of it on her and her struggling to be able to do what she wants to do in her life and her having to navigate like relationships with different people and her family and I just really enjoyed it. I It reads very much like a classic novel but with that fantasy elements thrown in and I just really enjoyed it. Then I read a couple of, I think these are both middle grade books. The first one was uh, Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. I really love Renee Watson's writing and this one I gave four stars. We're following our main character. She doesn't have a relationship with her father's side of the family. Um, there's something that's happened but we don't know why her dad doesn't have a relationship with them and she wants to for her I think it was her 12th birthday or something like that to go to New York City with her dad to go ahead and meet her family and learn about her history on that side of the family and I really enjoyed this one as well. Um, I think this was a really cute novel and one that I would definitely recommend for anyone who has who is looking for books for middle grade readers. I feel like if I had read it around that time I'd probably give it five stars. I'm just not the target audience for these books. And the next one was Home Home by Lisa Allen Agostini. This one has just like the most gorgeous cover on it but um, I gave this one three stars. It was good. Um, it just didn't really stand out as, as well to me. This is one of the ones I'm having a little bit of a hard time remembering what even happened in this one. It's like super short. I think it was middle grade. This one might be a little bit more like young reader, like young adult. What I liked about this book was it does touch on mental health and stuff. Our main character, she's moved from Trinidad to um, Canada, I believe it was, to because of her issues that she's having with depression and stuff. She um, moves in with her aunt, I think it was. I can't say whether or not whether the mental health representation was super accurate because this isn't something that I've had to deal with, but just as some... Um, an outside observer. It seemed pretty well done. Okay, I have two books left. I'm gonna have to kind of hurry through this because I need to be at work. I need to be leaving for work like right now. So the first one was Hawaii by James A. Mishner. I randomly picked this up on a whim. It's one of the most gigantic books I have on my shelf at the moment and I have I was gifted to this by one of my family members and I've been wanting to get to it for forever. So, but I got the audiobook actually from the library, so which is great because the audiobook was super long, so it helped me to get through it. It took me probably over a week to read this book because it's very, it's a very big book. It's like almost a thousand pages, and so the audiobook for this was crazy long, like 60 hours or something. I thought I listened to it on two times speed, 
and I gave this one three stars. I really, um, it's just like a very, it takes place over a wide variety of time and it's kind of like Hawaii's history, but not the exact, it's like more of a fictional, fictionalized version of Hawaii's history from people coming and inhabiting the land and then eventually like missionaries coming to the land and everything we're following. It's divided into I think like five different sections and in each section where we jump forward in the timeline and some of the characters do relate back to other characters that we followed their storylines of in the past. And I thought it was interesting, three stars I gave this one. Um, it's not exactly the type of book that I probably would have picked up on my own, but I did enjoy it. And while I don't think I'm going to be running to read any other books by James Mishner anytime soon, I am glad that I got to this one. It was just like such a long book and um, there's a lot of descriptions in here. There were a lot of, there's just like a lot, a lot of, um, there's a lot of detail in this book, which is part of what makes it so long. So just know that if you go into this book, it's very chunky and very hefty and will take you a good minute. And then the last book that I read, which is a great one to end the month on, was Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. I gave this one four stars. And this is one of the more well-known books of Toni Morrison. And I hadn't read it myself before. It's my first time reading it and I really enjoyed it. I look forward to reading it again sometime in the future. This, in this book, we're following the story of Milkman, but not just him, but like the people in his life, his family. And I feel like this book just really circles around um, these different characters and it keeps going around and around in a way that's just so beautiful and interesting to read. And I, I really enjoy Toni Morrison's writing and I think that there's characters from this book, I believe, that tie into other books that she's written. I'm not for sure, but I'm going to definitely continue on. I think Tar Baby is the next one in publication order that I'm going to be reading, but I, I just really... I love Toni Morrison's writing. She definitely lives up to the hype for me. I would say Song of Solomon is probably one of my favorite ones that I've read so far, but my memory is like so terrible because I remember liking the other ones as well, but I just look forward to eventually rereading them all again and just becoming even more familiar with the storylines of all of her books. So those are all the books that I read for the month of August and I wish I had more time to spend talking about each of these but I just really do not have the time but I am glad that I got to at least share this much of the books with you guys and if you want to stay more in touch with the books that I'm keeping reading I'm going to still continue to do Friday reads starting again this Friday so that I can talk about each of these books a little bit more in depth instead of waiting until the end of the month or even like a little bit longer like I did for this one and then forgetting half of my thoughts on feelings on these books. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to support my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!